opening prayer. Thank you. Mr. Fred, if you are you are online, kindly unmute yourself and give us an opening prayer. Okay, okay. Please, can I be heard? Yes, you can be heard. Okay. Please let us bow in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful unto you. We give you all the glory. Lord, we are grateful unto you. We thank you for how far you have brought us as a union, as a family. Lord, we are grateful. We thank you, God, for this program that you have blessed us with within this season, Lord. We thank you for knowledge that is made available for us. We thank you, God, for wisdom. We thank you. We even commit the speaker for this day into your hands, Lord. We thank you that you work in him both to will and to do according to your good pleasure. That unto us is given knowledge, unto us is given wisdom, even understanding in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for such a wonderful prayer. I will, will, will start uh, with a presentation from our resource person. I'm, but before then, I will... Come again. Um, you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. I'll, 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 I'll want, I would like to introduce our, our speaker for today. Um, our speaker, as we can see on our screen, his, his name is uh, R.D. Nanakufi. Owusu, uh, dietitian one. Out in the sense that he is a registered dietitian of many, many years experience. Um, he's, a, he's my senior senior in the sense that I am a senior dietitian, but he's been practicing way back when I was at my undergrad level. He's been practicing since and he's still practicing today. Uh, we have worked on several occasions at the whole teaching hospital and also as a preceptor at UHAS. He is currently a lecturer at University of Health and Allied Sciences Ho. He's a, a health ad advocate, a public speaker, and a TV personality. He's the host of My Health, My Life on UTV and a regular guest on other health programs on UTV and NEET FM. His passion for health advocacy and to see people in good health has won him several awards. Uh, recently, he won the Health Advocate of the Year 2021 Sustainability and Social Investment Awards. And his program, the program that he, he holds on UTV won the health program of the year. I could go on the whole the whole night talking about him. However, Honorable um, Mr. Nakofi is a very humble person and would not allow me to continue um, saying so much about him and would like to take over from now and take us through tonight's topic, nutrition, diet, and health, what they have in common, how we can eat well to live healthily. Mr. Nakofi, you can take over from here. Thank you so yes, much. Uh, yes, Salam. I'm excited to join you from Ghana, Accra. I'm sure you guys miss Ghana already. Uh, so much. I know that for sure. Um, I'm sure the sound is okay. Everything is all right. I can shoot. Salam, if you are good to yes, go, you, let me know. Yes, you, you, you can share your screen. Yeah, you can. Okay. Um, so the the I'm, I'm, I'm setting up my PC. I just entered the office, so I'll, I'll do that along the way, but I'll speak extempo um, in for a while. Uh, so okay. I, I'm excited to join you guys uh, from Ghana. And I was saying that I'm sure you guys miss Ghana already, but um, I will console you with the fact that it's, it's very hot over here. I don't know about China, but it's very, really, really hot. Hot, not just in terms of the weather, but also hot in our pockets as well. Um, so like um, Salam said, 
I, I have a passion for health and health advocacy. So this is a good time for me to speak to you. I, I reckon that most of you are within the ages of uh, 25 to say about 35, 40 thereabout. And that is a very critical point in determining what the fortunes of your health will be getting to the twilight of your life. Because give or take by 30, 35, 40, 50, when you have uh, sort of actualized, according to Maslow's um, hierarchy of needs, where you would have actualized, you have a lot of diseases uh, besetting you. And so when these diseases come about, they sort of destabilize you and you go and see the dietitian and the dietitian will tell you, you can only take this quantity of this, don't take this often. Can you wait, hold on with this one? And a lot of people complain when that is done. They say that, oh, I've worked very hard and I, I'm making money. Uh, I can afford to eat what I want to eat. Now they are telling me, eat this, don't eat that, eat this, don't eat that. And it's very depressing when you hear some people cry. But be it as it may, there are things that, or there are decisions that we can make now that can affect or that can make us eat what we want to eat at a later date in life. There's a fancy ad, ad, adage that goes like this. It says, Edidida yesin edidi prekum. And so to wait, if you are able to eat every day, it's better than eating once at once. And that's the habit that a lot of people have. They want to enjoy the now, forgetting about the future, you know? And so our admonishment for us now is to make critical health and nutrition choices that will make our uh, tomorrow uh, manageable or enjoyable for us in the long term. So the topic we are dealing with is nutrition, uh, health, and disease, or nutrition, lifestyle, and disease. So nutrition, diet, and health, yes. So nutrition... I'll first start by defining the three terms that we are dealing with, nutrition and diet. A lot of people confuse uh, nutrition with diet or they interchange it. So somebody says that, okay, your diet is not good. Your diet is not good. You hear somebody refer to somebody and say that, oh, your diet is often not good. It is a mistake. Your nutrition may not be good. When you talk about a diet, then it's a specialized, arranged, specially arranged set of meals that a dietitian will give to a person or the person can decide to voluntarily go on for the purposes of getting particular health outcomes. So a diet is a specially arranged meal or a set of specially arranged meals. But nutrition is talking about the ingestion, the utilization of uh, the things that we take in and how our body uses. So what we, we take in as food, what we ingest as food and how our body utilizes it, okay? And so let's not confuse the two, nutrition and diet. Then when you talk about health, we all know what health is. Um, I reckon there are a lot of health students uh, on the platform, on the meeting. So we are talking more about holistic health. When we are talking about health, we are not just thinking about physical health. We are talking about emotional health. We are talking about mental health. We are talking even about spiritual health. And we are talking about um, other aspects. So we look not at health just in the malady sense or the illness sense, but also on the whole. And I dare say that nutrition or diet has um, 
and interplay or has an effect on all these various aspects of health. Do you know that people eat based upon their stress levels? So there's something called stress eating. That for, for some people, the stress level will make them not eat at all. High stress levels will make them not eat at all. But for some, high stress levels makes them overeat. And so there's a term that is called stress obesity that links stress to weight gain, all right? So that is possible to, to happen. So diet or nutrition has an interplay or an effect on all these various aspects of uh, health. Now, um, there are critical things that come up when we talk about nutrition. And the first thing is from, we say, from cradle to crest, or from bed to death. And so we now say you are not just what you eat, but you are also what your mother ate. So by the pathway of fetal programming, what your mother ate can lay the foundation to disease onset or disease delay. You can pass on the genetic susceptibility of disease in your family line to your children by influencing the genes, okay? Or you can delay the passage by influencing the genes with what you eat. So that takes us to epigenetics. So in, in, in the mother's eating, you realize that for many people in the first three months, there's, they, they go through hyperemesis or uh, what we call nausea and vomiting. They have difficulty in retaining food. And so many will resort to soft drinks. A lot of people resort even to energy drinks. And so that intake of excessive energy drinks primes the child at a certain uh, stage to getting some disease later on in life. High caffeine intake is another one uh, that puts many people at risk. Then again, you have, uh, just a minute, I'm trying to share my screen so that I, I get to show you the slide. I started without the slides because I was en route. I just got to my office and I'm setting up to join you. So I will join with the audio and then I'll cut off from this one and I will join uh, with the laptop. Please forgive me. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, Hello. we can hear you. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes please. we can hear you. We can hear you. Are we clear? Yes. Okay. okay. You can you, right. you you can project it now. We can see your okay. screen. You can project it. So. Okay. Okay, so this is what we are, we are dealing with. These are usual quotes that I give, and I'm sure we passed that stage. All right. So at the heart of health and nutrition is our choices, and the choices that we make determine to a large extent how well we do. Let me put off the phone one. It is giving us feedback. Amazing. So health is looked at holistically. And so digestion is part. Apart from these five levels, we are also looking at these things. Digestion, sleep, diet, stress, hormones, genetics, supplements, exercise, 
and talk to them. Now, when you're talking about digestion, one major thing that comes up with regards to nutrition is the microbiome. And the microbiome is talking about your lay down of good bacteria or good microorganisms in your gut that promotes health and well-being. In some jurisdictions in New Zealand, they are using the microbiome to, to lay the foundation to help people recover fast. So irritable bowel syndrome is one of the diseases that uh, they are using the microbiome to, to set up. So abuse of um, antibiotics is one of the things that sets the microbiome wrongly. So we have a lot of children abusing um, antibiotics and that puts them at a risk. Intake of highly fermented foods is seen by research to improve microbiome. So you must ask yourself, how many fermented foods are you eating? You want to improve your nutrition, you want to improve your diet, that will give you healthy outcomes. And one of the barriers to resistant disease is the microbiome. And so what are you laying down for your microbiome? Are you taking a lot of fermented foods that will help your microbiome to improve? Because you know that these fermented foods, uh, the, the good bacteria feed on them and they, they, they flourish and then they multiply. So these are typical pupunsu. The morikoko is very helpful. Mashke is very good. Where you are, I wonder if you can get, but even things like kimchi. And I went to South Korea some years ago, I think about three or four years ago, and I enjoyed kimchi. So you can find fermented food options that can help increase your microbiome. Natural yogurt is another one that can improve your nutrition, that can improve your microbiome, that can improve your health outcomes. Again, I see excessive intake of sugary product is seen to affect the microbiome. Research coming from Israel seems to suggest that um, excessive artificial sweetener intake is, uh, affects the microbiome. There are schools of thought that don't agree with that, but in my view, look at the meta-analysis and the, the review that are available, there seem to be a shift or a tilt to favoring excessive, the, the impact of excessive artificial sweetener intake on um, the microbiome. So sugary foods, highly fried foods are another one. And in Ghana, we fry everything. I don't know if we have imported those attitudes to China, where we fry yam. We take fried yam, we take fried fish, we take fried egg, we take fried uh, um, fried plantain. So kelewele, I have a slide like that. Kelewele is another one that people uh, take a lot. Let me show you that kelewele slide. And so you see people will indulge in highly fried foods. And that, uh, yes, so this is, a, this is a slide. This is our typical kose. And people will put kose in bread. They call it local hot dog in Ghana. Um, or they will take the fried pork with the fried yam. Some people will also take the kilowile with the fried groundnuts. And I wonder why they should fry the groundnuts. You know, and this will lead to high trans fats. Also, because when you take high fried foods or high sugary foods, you increase oxidation in your system. And the more oxidation is going on, the more you are predisposing your arteries, the more you are predisposing your uh, your veins, the more you are predisposing your tissues to uh, fibrosis. And so you form scar tissues that can lead to increased uh, blood pressure. And um, also on the peripheral region, peripheral blood pressure will be increased when you have high oxidation going on. This also will lead to some susceptibility to uh, cancer forming uh, free radicals that can impinge upon your cells and affect its integrity. So if we are doing the local hot dog thing, we must be very careful. You know, if you are taking kose, take kose, if you are taking bread, take bread. I don't know the equivalent in China, but I also see that if there is the possibility of taking high fried foods. So ask yourself, 
the carbohydrate is it fried the protein is it fried the stew is it fried Ghana ya chibi bia Ghana for ya chibi bia obechi eh frano for for minutes so they will put oil on the base and put uh, um, onions and tomato and they will fry it for a long time that attitude is not good your stew is fried your your jam is fried your fish is fried can you grill one of them or can you boil or steam the yam and and grill the fish and maybe fry the stew i don't see why people should fry pepper green pepper people are frying green pepper and and they are taking it in you know the the normal uh, grounded pepper that we take people are frying it and it's leading to a lot of problems so we should be very careful minimize the fries and i'm saying that make sure that at most one of the meals that you are taking i'm sure you are very familiar with bra chops green or, or 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 pork instead of frying you can grill the pork there's also another thing that people do when they are grilling they over grill and so the grill will get black but so grilling tilapia not to be very black and when you grill like that you you can have what we call poly aromatic hydrocarbon which in themselves are not very good especially when you are doing a charcoal grill or you are grilling over firewood and that can be a little injurious here so grill but don't over grill boil but also don't throw the stock away that and when you fry make sure that you don't overdo the frying okay uh, let me go back with the slide there's a a, a slide over here i'm i'm jumping the slides uh, as it were you see this this slide look at the amount of meat on the fufu and the typical Ghanaian want to eat fufu this way i want to ask you this day choose in this day who you will serve which of these bowls of fufu do you like it is a matter of choice choices are at the heart of nutrition at the heart of diet at the heart of health what choice will you make will you choose a b or c the first second on the second the third one if you choose the first one or the second one for yourself alone i need to lay hands on you and pray for you for the forgiveness of your sin because this is plentifully many much more it is too much we say a bruso a bruso tawenum tawenum ne prao Gideon says it's B for me. Nana, Nana, uh, Nana, what? Vivian, it's, it's funny, eh? but it's serious. Nana, Kwesi says, Chawenum, Chawenum ne prao. Because listen, look at the amount of protein on this fufu. This is a zoo. It is a zoo. A trinam is there. A krantianam is there. Sibonam is even there. Adwa is there. All sorts of meat. And they will put it and they will buy a uh, fufu five cities and they will buy meat about 40 cities they want to show social status self-aggrandizement if you go to ghana restaurant in china or in in, in Huangzhou or in beijing if you go there and you are buying fufu make sure you don't buy this kind of fufu because it has health implications number one excessive meat intake will increase your risk of intake of saturated fats that can predispose you to cardiovascular disease, coronary artery disease, and the like. And so you must be careful that you don't overtake the fufu or you don't overtake the meat. We advise two to three matchbox sizes of protein on your, your food at the time. So we, we can also tell you that if you take matchbox size, two or three of it, you are getting about um, 20, 21 grams of protein at a sitting. If you multiply that by three, then you're getting about 60 uh, grams of protein, which may be okay, 60 to 80. Plus you may take beans, you may take kontome, you may take other sources of protein, which will add up granites, which will add up to make the 20 uh, grams. Then you get your 80 grams of protein. That's about a 0.8 gram per kilogram body weight. If you're about 70 kilos in weight for a normal person. So let's be careful about how much protein we are taking. I beg you, I know where you are. Food is cheap. Ghana food is expensive. Meat is cheap. Chicken is cheap. And so you must not overindulge in the protein. 
we use half palm size. Half palm size. Let me say again. Half of your palm size. So you look at the size of your palm. If your palm is big, God bless you. If your palm is not big, God have mercy on you. So look at the size of your palm and take about half of it. So the third slide, the size of protein there is the best. And to one go and one fat tilapia, because yes, say, I too will be on this one. You have a big tilapia on your on your on your on your plate, and you are finishing it. It is good. Is it something good? Somebody says food money cannot build out. It's the typical Ghanaian attitude, but it's bad. It's bad. And you have people making adverts, doing adverts, and saying all those things. Or see, Trawenum. Trawenum ne prao, eat healthily and not amiss to help hurt yourself. Okay? And so if we have money, we should be careful about how we eat because it can affect our, our health. Okay, somebody will say because fish is also good. Let me take a lot of it. You, the fact that you don't have to take zoo, that's in that you have to go for an aquarium. Different kinds of fish. And the typical person when he cooks fish like soup, when you stir the, the soup, you cannot stir it. You have to be doing, you have to be doing like this. The, the, the spoon cannot or the ladle cannot go around. To me, I will say October as you know, it is plentifully many much more, and it will hurt us when we go that line. Okay, so let's be careful about how much protein we are taking. We advise seeds, legumes, nuts, pulses. These are the cornerstone of good nutrition. They have good micro uh, nutrients, micronutrients that help. They have good polyunsaturated fatty acids that help. So make sure that you are getting some seeds, your sesame seeds, your sunflower seeds, your flax seeds. Eh? You are getting your lean seeds. You are getting those things. You are getting your nuts, walnuts. You are getting your, your um, cashew nuts. You are getting your pistachios. All these nuts are helpful. Also make sure that you are getting your agushi, uh, melon seeds, you are getting all those things in there to help you. There's nothing wrong with taking cereals like oats and tombra and throwing in some seeds over there. One of the things I've also seen is that people eat culturally too much in Ghana. Ghanaians like to eat culturally. The only nuts you know is in Katia, not only in Katia. There are different types of Katia. In China, you find a lot of nuts. So make sure that you take a lot of them. We see people um, taking all these things which are not healthy and they are doing it. Energy drinks are another one. A lot of people abuse energy drinks and it's pure glucose and it's putting a lot of energy into your system that you may not be able to handle very well. So be careful about the amount of energy drinks you are taking, the soft drink you are taking once a while. In, in China, you can find giant bottles, and giant bottles are a deception. They will tell you that they are saving you money, but nutritionally, they are hurting you because you go for giant buckets. You will, you, the tendency for you to take more is very high. So energy drinks and soft drinks are another one. What spread are you putting into your bread? Are you putting butters? Are you putting uh, um, uh, cheese? At this your age, with butter, you are only allowed five to ten percent saturated fat at a certain. So, if you are always in the tendency of taking butter and, and margarine, by the way, butter and margarine, the difference is not really much, it's hydrogenated, and most of it is trans fat. So, you must be careful. So, the granite paste is better, and it is a thin spread. Man, but maybe in your bread, you know, searching, then the bread is, and then you toast it for me. They will toast the bread with margarine. Hey, sister, what is this? You toast the bread with margarine or with butter again or with cheese. The Lord have mercy upon you and forgive you, my sins, if you are in the tendency of doing that. Some people will also prepare their stew and they will have. A, a, a film of fat on their stew, like the Sea of Galilee. There's a, there's a Sea of Galilee, the oil on their stew, you no, know, it's like the Sea of Galilee. You can actually float, it's like the Dead Sea. Why do you put a lot of oil on your stew like that, or on your soup? 
Now, when you go to the troubles and they are giving you no more power, only become a day goes, hey, sister, if you cannot afford, a, 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 if you cannot afford a, a, a mirror, tell me, I'll buy a mirror and send it to you. Why do you want to look at your, your soup and then makeup? You want to do makeup on your stew because there's a, a film of oil which is actually uh, such that you can look at your face inside. It is something we must stop. Let's not have the Sea of Galilee on our, on our stew. It doesn't help us. Okay, so like I said, I'm just moving the slide. When I go to any particular slide, what comes, I'll just tell you. So too much box sizes is preferred for you, okay? So also, our time of eating, we must have a particular time of eating. You must decide that every day around this time I'll eat, you can prime your body. There's something we call a um, circadian rhythm or a biological clock which shows that almost every part of your body has a clock. So you can train your body to know when to expect food. And research shows that erratic meal times doesn't make for uh, optimum insulin release. If your meal times are not static, they are not around the same time. So give or take plus, plus or minus one hour is fine. But some people have such erratic meal times. Today they eat at seven, the next day they eat at 10, the next day they eat at 11. You are throwing your body into a state of confusion. Let me make a simple analogy here. Do you not realize that when you sleep around 10 p.m. every day, at around 10 p.m., you naturally will feel sleepy? Do you not realize if you visit George Bush or, or now uh, Biden, at the White House at 5 a.m. every morning, you naturally feel the urge to go there at around 5 a.m. So regularizing your meal time is at the heart of optimizing your insulin release. And erratic meal times are associated with the precipitation of the onset of type 2 diabetes, especially for people who have a family history. So I want to admonish you to make time have a particular time for your meals. It's very important that you do that. Some people will also skip meals. And it's one of the bad habits that people have, skipping of meals. Do not skip meals. Meals must be taken at about three times a day. So you take your breakfast, you take your lunch, and you take your supper. We advise four to six hours between the meals. So give or take about five hours between the meals. So say you have your breakfast around seven to eight. Anything after nine is getting too late for your breakfast. Especially when you wake at five or six, we advise that you take your breakfast two to three hours after waking. Then, so that will come up to seven to eight about. And I'm saying that after nine, you're getting too late. Because when you delay the meal time like that, number one, you tend to eat more. You eat more than you usually would eat. And then you store a little, and then you, you, you use a little and store the rest apart, and you start getting big. Also, when you delay your meal like that, your body goes into conservation mode. So the amount of energy you would usually expend, what we call basal metabolic rate, the amount of energy you spend to breathe, to think, for, for your heart to work, for your kidneys and your lungs to your, your liver to work, the amount of energy you would have spent is about 60% of your total daily energy expenditure will be reduced because you have not given it anything. So the body goes on conservation. And then you overeat and store more. So you are, you are not spending a lot of energy and you are eating more. So you gain weight. So skipping of meals is rather a recipe for weight gain. What people don't know is that when you skip your meals, you gain weight because your body is conserving and it's telling you to eat more. So it becomes dangerous for you. So eat three times a day if you can. The three times a day will also make you moderate the amount of food you eat. Because if you are eating the next five hours, you don't have to eat a lot. And so if you eat in the morning and you can stay for six, seven, eight hours without eating, chances are that the food you ate was too much, plentifully many much more. Just the above. 
If you eat and after two hours you are feeling hungry and the food you ate was too small, so do not skip your meals. Time your meals, and I'm saying three times a day, moderate intake, and then uh, regularize the meal time. And so that will lead me to my next slide, which says one gallon is better than putang. You you can identify this gallon. This is what the gallon that the taxi drivers buy fuel in Ghana. In Ghana, they don't feel tango. Oh, only one gallon. Then they'll go uh, when the thing is getting empty, then they'll go and top up. So that's how Ghanaians buy fuel. But the rich people, those from the East Legon or those from China, those students who have returned from China, they buy food tank. But when it comes to healthy eating, one gallon is better than food tank. Say it and let me hear. One gallon is better than food tank. You don't have to eat full tank. Carry forward. I'm eating. It's better, it's better than, than full tank. tank. Vivian, is that you? It's milli. Milli, okay. Milli. Okay. Mao One gallon. Okay. One gallon is always better than full tank. You don't eat carry forward. I beg you in the name of God. Eat a little. Let your body utilize the byproduct. I see people who sit behind. 10 mangoes, 10 mangoes, and finish it. The Lord have mercy upon you. You can finish 10 mangoes at a time. You are wasting money and you are wasting, wasting vitamin C. Vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin. So your body doesn't store so much. And a lot of it comes out through the urine. So if you are taking a lot of mangoes at a time, you are using just a little and you are getting fructose sugar. And so somebody says that, oh, me, I don't eat, oh, I only take mangoes, I only take banana, but I'm still gaining weight. If you take four to five fingers of banana, it's like you have taken one bowl of kinky. I'm sure you are surprised. If you take four to five fingers of banana, it's like you have taken one bowl of kinky. Because calorie-wise, it's around the same thing, uh, one CD bowl of kinky. So you don't take excessive fruits at a time. It's better to spread the foods one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening. Then you optimize the benefits because the tendency that some people have is that after doing 10 mangoes at a time, they will not take foods for the next two weeks. But you are doing yourself a disservice because your vitamin C is giving you antioxidants that is more pain than free radicals that are in your system due to the high sugary, high fried foods intake. So you must take two to three fruits every day. And I'm saying that spreading the fruits at the time is the better way to go, okay? Sufficiency economy. Yes, sufficiency economy, but you must be careful so that you don't hurt yourself. Fruits are expensive in China, okay? That is why you must spread it. And also that is why you must uh, take it moderately. It's important that you take some. If you don't take some, pot belly is the order of the day, yes. Pot belly is bad. And I have a slide on pot belly over here. Let me go to it. Whilst you have asked the question, you have made the comment. Let me go to pot belly. Look at this. Look at this. A pot belly is a risk factor for type 2 diabetes. Pot belly. So now in Ghana, we are recording 30 people, 35 years, 34, who are getting type 2 diabetes. They say the age is around 40, but now it's dropping. Because of pot belly, three things that I think lead to pot belly, excessive meal intake at a time, your stomach muscles will expand and they don't contract that quickly. If you keep your stomach muscle in an excited state by heavy meal intake, especially at night, then you can have pot belly easily. When you take a lot of fried foods, okay, fried yam with uh, fried chicken, with fried fish, with fried pepper, then you are getting a lot of calories in your system. Let me tell you, one gram of carbohydrate has four units of energy, but one gram of fat has nine units of energy. So per grammage, the calories you are getting from fat is times two plus one. So it's plentifully many much more. Just say, abrosho, abrosho. So it's too much. That is why you must reduce the fries. It's giving you more colors, and that can give you pot belly. Late eating, heavy late eating. 
Now, when you are late, it doesn't mean you cannot eat. You can eat, but you can swap the typical breakfast meal. That is your beverage, your porridge, your oats, your wheat, your tom brown, your muesli, your winter mix. You can swap it to the night around eight, nine, because that digests faster and it is not too caloric. About half of the meal is fiber. By the way, fiber is good because it clears and um, clears uh, um, free radicals, it clears cholesterol from your system. It mobs cholesterol from your system. So high fiber meals are good as against processed foods. So if you're taking all this pasta, and, and in China, the tendency for you to take pasta is very high. No juice, no juice. There are different types of no juice. So you can get whole grain nodules and take. That is advantageous. But if you are taking this Italian pasta, which are very, very refined and processed, you are putting yourself at the service all the time. You want to take a pastry and some soft drink. The Lord have mercy on you and forgive you my sins. If you are in that habit, repent and be baptized again. If you need us to do a crusade for you, we can organize a special crusade for you. So if you are me, if you want to find out if you have a pot belly or not, it is not mine. It's very cheap. Get a tape measure. Medically, your waist is not where we call your waist. Medically, your waist is around your navel area. It's the most prominent part of your stomach. All right? So people have a pot belly on the upper quadrant. Some people have the mid quadrant. Some people have the lower quadrant. So we call something an apple shape and a pear shape. So if you have an apple shape, then you have central obesity. And so I said that the proximity of that fat to your, your pancreas leads to insulin resistance because wherever there is protein and there's a lot of fat, the protein doesn't work well. So insulin is protein. When there's a lot of fat around it, that insulin will work well because the receptors are filled with fat and they don't receive the insulin very well. If you have sperm, which is fatty, the sperm is slow. It is very lazy. Can't go anywhere. It can't get anybody pregnant. So wherever there's protein, there must not be a lot of fat. So look at this. If you're a male and you, you, you put a tape measure around your waist, which is around your nether area, I'm seeing the most prominent part of your tumor. And if it is more than 91 centimeters, then you are centrally overweight. If you check it and it is more than 102 centimeters, then you are centrally obese. If you're a woman, yours is even lower. It should not be more than 75 centimeters. So today, today, go and buy a tape measure. It is 70 pesos in Ghana. In China, I'm sure it's like one yen. Go and buy it and put it around your waist. You can take a picture of this slide and then get the value. Uh, Salon has those figures off his head, so it can help you. So make sure if you want to find your nutritional status and see your risk to type 2 diabetes or your risk to cardiovascular disease, because a point value can even lead to increased uh, risk of getting hypertension, you know? And so you must check it. So this is very important. Then you will come to the, what we call the BMI, the body mass index. And I'm sure that one, most of you know it. You must check your body mass index to be sure that you are doing well. This is another one, passive smoking. That's even more dangerous. And smoking is bad. Okay, low physical activity is also bad. And so you must check it. All right, let me progress. People pour milk in food and they look away. If you have that habit, repent for the forgiveness of sin. You pour the milk inside the tea and you are chatting with somebody. So the milk is entering the milk, the tea, and the tea which is black or the coffee which is black is turning from black to brown, and from brown to cream, and from cream to white, then you say, yes, I'm living good. God help you. God help you, Novio, Novio, Mau, Mau help you. So you must be careful. You must be very, very careful. Time no day, somebody say time no day. Time no day is a saying. You must find time. Ayakao, hmm? pot belly. Pot belly, yes, pot belly is bad. It's a very serious thing. One of my professors told me that uh, in all you're getting, don't get pot belly. Because the best way to handle a pot belly is to prevent it. Because when it comes, dealing with it uh, is very good. If you are your tea, uh, okay, Caroline, tell him, tell her. 
If you do tea, tea pampa. Some people do tea like paint. They do in Ghana we call everything tea, milo tea and coffee tea. If you do milo and you can use the milo to paint your room in China, God help you. Somebody say, oh, me, I don't want to eat late. So in the late, I will do some milo and I will add bread. It's light, it will digest quicker. Master, who did you do? Who did you do? Because this milo that you are doing, you have put seven spoons of, 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 of milo inside the, the tea. And then you are pouring the milk inside and looking away. And you even put sugar in milo. Hey, sister. You can put sugar in you put sugar in Milo. I'm shocked for you. Milo already has uh, sugar. It has um it has milk. So in actual fact, you don't need milk in Milo. But if you want to add some, I can allow you like two or three eating spoons. It's fair enough. But don't pour them. What you do is that you are doing a storm in a teacup. A storm in a teacup. Mommy, you come out. Sweet things is there. You have to them. They are more inside. They sweet them. Tetrema. Eh? Tetrema. It can lead you to damnation if you don't tame your tongue. You know, once a while, you can indulge. Take some pizza. Take some pizza. But if you do it all the time, it is bad. Alcohol, you can do it once a while. Excessive alcohol intake is bad. Passive smoking, you can do something about it. Don't stay in environments where they are smoking too much. You must move away. And if you stay there for a while, move away. You know? And that is the way to help yourself. I asked somebody a question in my consulting room. I asked the person, do you drink frequently or you drink occasionally? You'll be surprised at what the person told me. He told me that I drink occasionally. But the occasion is frequent. <laughs> I drink occasionally, but the occasion is frequent. And just say, you're quiet and I say, you're black. Because if you are not careful, every weekend there's an activity to go to. There's a meeting, there's a, an outing you want to go, and you'll be taking it plentifully, many much more. You'll be doing it excessively. And that one is not very good. Okay? All right. Uh, in China, the smoking is everywhere. Eh? I see. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's a big issue. But I think that you can uh, excuse yourself when you realize it's becoming too much for you. So I have taught you about the weight classification for nutritional status determination. This is another one, caloric overload. I think that if you add a soft drink to your food, it is a sin and you must go for confession. It's a nutritional sin. Because if you were even taking like some small rice and adding a something to it, I can understand. But you will hit the rice like a mountain before Zerubbabel. And you clear it to become a plane. You say, it is not by mind. It's not by power, but by my spirit. Say yes, the Lord. Then you start quoting scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you are clearing the mountain of rice before you. And you are adding a soft drink to it. How many calories is even in the soft drink? How many calories is even in the, in, the, in the rice? And people say, oh, me, I don't take Coke. I don't take, I like quinine tonic. Quinine tonic has tonics. Most tonics has more sugar than even Coke. Most tonics have more sugar than Coke. Especially quinine tonic. Because of the amount of uh, because of the amount of quinine inside which is very bitter they add a lot of um, sugar to it before you can take i don't know why you should buy ratchet and buy fish and buy meat and buy egg and add bullet to it i i think in china you don't do those kind of things but i know some people like to eat typically like Ghanaians when they are outside so you must be very, very careful, okay? Don't do that. If you attend the church of green bottles and glasses too, you must be mindful of the quantity that you are taking. So I've spoken about all these things. I've talked about the food. So be very juicy in what you eat. Now, let me talk about color. 
The more the color on your meal, the better. So please, anytime you are eating, you must count about three or more colors. Three or more colors. If it's less than three, it is nutritionally bereft because the color in food, I'm talking about natural colors. I'm not talking about dye, Sudan for dye and artificial colors. No, I'm talking about the color that is in food. Vegetables and fruits are the things that give you color. So how many colors are on food? Don't eat like an disco student. Why do you take colors? Black and white, dichromatic and monochromatic eating. So cake and fish and pepper. There is no tomatoes. There is no onions. There are no cucumber. There is no, oh, you know, the more the color, the better. So be mindful about this. The aubergine and all those things are there. They will add color to your food when you are doing soup. Don't take like soup and let it be only tomatoes and onion. Put garden eggs there, put aubergine there, put carrots in there, put adem, put duma, put a leaf, put boko boko, put a yo yo. I'm sure you can find them in China, even though it may be difficult. But if you want to eat right, you have to invest in it. Okay, we be see what check a crab fish, a crab egg, bako, we learn so a crab then salad, full package, pa, full package. But it's an overload. It's an overload. It will hurt you. Okay, what you dear forget? You even forget your my dear. Okay, so you want to add your my dear to it to your yamen yamen count. If you want to add your my dear to it, God help you. Every intestine is bad with fat, saturated fat. So you that you like liver like that, liver is the storage organ of fat. The gizzard has fat around it. If you can remove the fat, it will help you, okay? And when you are taking it, don't overdo it. The towel and the runabout. Some people would like to suck bulls. Mm, 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 mm. Then they are sucking the bulls. Some people will be sucking the bulls, the bulls will not be coming and then they will they will take a stone and hit the bone and open the bone into two and they will lick it. You are just licking fat. You are licking saturated fat. And so you must be careful. The chicken marrow is better because that one is, is, is not filled with fat. But the goat and the cow leg and the pracontel and all those things, zebra combination, what is that? Two colors on your food. God help you. You are not protecting yourself well enough. Six minutes more to go. Okay, I will, I will be ending very soon. I'm sure we need to take some questions. So please increase the colors on your food. Tell me, believe me, I can talk for 10 hours. So look at this plate. These are examples of plates that I brought before you that are very colorful. Look at the person's uh, banco and grilled mackerel. What we call salmon here is called mackerel. Look at the grilled mackerel. And look at the salad. Oh my God. Look at the color. Look at sweet corn. Look at tomatoes. Look at all this. And it puts a serving of popo. And, but I dare say that the fruit is too much. So you take about half of this and half of this, and you are good to go. You get it. So the more, and be watchful about the pro inflammatory foods, all these sugar refined foods, butter, and all those things, they won't help you. Take the anti-inflammatory foods and look at this. Look at this. A kaleidoscope of colors. This is amazing. If your meals are filled with this, don't let avocado pass by you. Don't let peas pass by you. Broccoli and all those things, they are very helpful. I'll give you my last tip, then I'll go. Natural spices, mintiaka, kedro, bigiaba, pepper, a sugar risa, a foam risa, ikitinkiti, rosemary, bitter leaf, bay leaf, all these things, they are medicinal. They are better than all this ajinomoto that people take in China. All this MSG feel food that you are taking in China. And so they say, uh, all the tea in China, but I say all the artificial spices in China. We gave uh, MSG to rats in Ghana. That, and those they, they palpated and fell. They had palpitations and fell. And so let's be very careful about the excessive artificial spices. What time you take is helpful, exercise is helpful. So I want to say that eat smart. S is for simple, M is for moderate, A is for attractive, R is for roughage, 
and T is for takeaway. Eat smart. Make your meals simple. The complicated things in life kill us. M is for moderate. Moderate the amount that you eat. A is for attractive. What made food attractive? Color. And color comes from vegetables and fruits. T, R is for roughage. The more the fiber in your meals, the better for you. Okay? And T is for takeaway. If the food is too much, take some away and don't kill yourself. Thank you very much, sir, for having me. Thank you so much for your time. Wow. Well, it's been long since I spoke about these things and like maybe I'm, uh, I, I just realized that I'm beginning to um, sin against the, my profession. And uh, those who know me online will know that I, maybe I'm forgetting some of my tips. Thank you so much for reminding me tonight. Um, uh, my friends online, please, I've changed eh, from today onwards. <laughs> I've changed. I've been reminded of the things that I used to tell people. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do the right things now. Thank you so much. So oh, we will take it from there and then we'll open the floor. If you have a question, kindly raise your hand up and then I will call you. Then you ask your question. Use the the Zoom platform to raise your hand up. I will call you and then you ask your question, please. So I see a question in the in the in the chat box. Yeah. Somebody yes. has, has asked, please, how can I gain weight? My current weight is 16 kilograms. Now, when you give me your weight like that, I can't help you. I need your height in addition to calculate your BMI. If you were there, I would have done your I would have done your total body fat analysis to find out where your fat is to see if you have muscle more than fat or you have fat more than But I need your height at least to check and find your BMI because if you are vertically challenged, then your maybe 62 may be okay for you. A lot of people want to gain weight, really don't need to gain weight. So I must ask you what's your height? Okay, so uh, set or calculate the BMI for me. Uh, the height is 1.73. And then the weight is 67. So let me also try and do it from my laptop and calculator. 1.73. Somebody who has another question. 22.3. 22.3 is normal, isn't it? Yes, normal. normal. And the person may not be married. If you are not married and your BMI is 22, praise God. Because when you marry, so will add up. You understand? Like he's married. Assets. He's married, but the wife is not here. Ah, uh, okay. But twenty two is is okay. Twenty two is okay. So don't don't worry at all. You are just fine. If you want to uh, bulk up, then you can exercise a little or go to the gym. Okay. What shall I say? What shall I say? The what shall I say? Oh, nah, nah. <laughs> okay. Um, Sina, if somebody wants to know. How do you calculate the local food to know the, the amount of energy that is in them? Um, in the calorie calculation, she wants to know something about it. But now it's a, a whole dietetics class course because exactly. <laughs> calorie calculation, I need to school you and teach you about seven sizes and tell you uh, one seven is 15 grams of carbohydrate and then you multiply it by four and then find how many servings are in the food. It's too complicated for your simple mind. Uh, if you want further help, maybe just... maybe, maybe the calorie contribution of the various uh, um, nutrients, fat, protein, and maybe. Oh, but, just... Okay, so so we say that uh, about 55 or 50 to 60 percent should be carbohydrates. And the carbohydrate we are talking about, not just simple carbohydrates, but complex carbohydrates. So uh, vegetables uh, qualify to join the carbohydrate range, okay? There's a difference between percentage contribution and portions. So that's, that's something we must think about. And also the protein is about 20 to 25% and the fat is about 15, uh, no, the protein is rather 15 to 20 and the fat is about 20 to 25% contribution to your energy. But this, this all will, will not help you that much. What will help you is to make sure that your food is not too much at a time. You are eating moderate quantities. Have a bit of carbohydrate and make it complex. Let it be fiber-based. Have a little fat, some fat in there. Let it not be too much. We are not saying fat intake is bad, 
that saying too much fat intake is bad. And then make sure you have some vegetables over there, have some soups with your food because it's all helpful and it increases your nutrition. I will not try and go to the details of the nutrition because it's, it's too complex. Please, um, somebody wants to know, somebody wants to know if uh, it's normal to have a constant weight all the time. Yes, it's normal. It's normal to have a constant weight, but usually you have you fluctuate, maybe plus or minus one or two, and, and then you come back. The circumstances in life, stresses in life, maybe when you are getting close to your submission date, you will find out that you will be losing weight, you know? And then when you change a new environment, you find out you lose weight initially. But if there are wide variations, especially in a very short period of time, then you must seek medical help. So like in two weeks, you have lost 10 kilos, then it's a problem. Uh, you may be dealing with diabetes or some other chronic disease. So the variations of about one to two kilograms, give or take monthly basis is fine, okay? And then whilst at uh, weight loss issues, I must say that this quick fixes for weight loss, you must look at it because you have taken years to build the weight it must take some time to lose it. Don't be deceived by this, all these things that are going around about quick weight loss and things like that. Many of them may not be sustainable. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Dorothy, you can unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, doc, um, please, my question is that I find. I'm a dietitian, very... I'm not the doctor. Oh, okay. Okay, um, Mr. Dietitian, <laughs> yeah. um, I find it very difficult to take um, breakfast. Yeah. And if, if I try taking breakfast, even the lighter ones like smoothie, um, I end up becoming extra weak throughout the whole day. I will be mm. so sleepy and so weak. And I'm very, very, very active. In fact, I make sure every morning I have 30 minutes of exercise throughout the week from Monday to Sunday. But my breakfast is my major problem. So I don't I don't know. I've, I've tried several ways, but still. Okay, so what time will you typically take your breakfast? Um, okay, actually for now, I've, I've ignored my breakfast completely. So but I'm, if I I'm, do I'm, want to... I'm asking about mm. the one, what time you were doing that was making you feel weak. Oh, let us by nine, I'm done with breakfast. Okay, okay. So, so uh, typically you would take what? Um, oh. Maybe sometimes it's just bread and some vegetables. Sometimes it's just smoothie. And it makes uh, you Maybe eat. very, I very. See. As soon as I take breakfast, when I get to the lab and even there is any uh, machine that I'm supposed to use, you see that my eyes are just trying to deceive me. I, I just feel, feel very sleepy. sleepy, very tired. Mm. Can you try a fruit or something and see how that works? Not a smoothie, okay. but a fruit, just a fruit. Or you try some beverage, okay? Some okay. beverage, and then you can take biscuits. Uh, low fat biscuits instead of the bread, right? Maybe okay. two or three pieces of biscuit, and you take maybe a green tea or any other tea, decarbonated tea, you put a little sugar, a uh, little milk inside, and try it and see if that works for you. All right. Okay, then. Uh, okay, Tinia, somebody wants to know if um, eating Gary Sokins is even a healthy choice. Why not? It depends on how you combine it. If you take soakings, don't do the gari like this thing, or plenty gari and soak it till it becomes hard. You take a little gari, add your groundnuts, <laughs> add your milk in there, you know? You can, you can even add avocado to your bread that you're using to add to the, uh, uh, the soaking. And it's a balanced meal. You know, you have your carbohydrates, you have your protein in the milk and also in the groundnuts, you have your minerals in the groundnuts, and then you have some vitamins also in the groundnuts and in the milk. Then you can add a fruit to it, or you can take some a slice of avocado 
and then add it to it. It's a balanced meal. Essentially, rock pork boy is not good, right? The, the, the gari with the sugar alone. Yes, rock pork boy. That one there, yeah, you need grease. <laughs> that, one, that one is not, is not balanced. Oh, okay. All right, we'll settle. Please, you can, you can ask. You can unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Uh, my boss, good evening. Good uh, please, evening. I would like to find out uh, what is the maximum number of eggs one can eat in a day, as in boiled eggs. And also when it comes well, to frying also, how many can you combine to fry within a day? I guess I do. Well, this, 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 is a, this is a debate that is going on in the nutrition world. It's a very controversial issue. Some have taken the cap off. Some are still putting a cap on it. Either to we used to have the impression that eggs intake are bad, so they will lead to cholesterol. But the evidence is showing that dietary cholesterol, uh, especially that from egg, may not contribute so much to it. But also, you must think about calories because there's fat in there, and so the yolk has fat. And so, if you take a lot of it, you are not just taking protein or you are not just taking cholesterol, but you are also taking calories which will add on to your weight gain. So in Ghana, we have come up with a guideline that says that one egg a day is okay to take. So on a daily basis, you can take one egg a day. And then also take other sources of protein, i.e. the fish and then the chicken and the meat in the lean form. So you, we advise that maybe if you are doing one egg a day, it's fine. So one boiled egg for your breakfast, some fish for your lunch, some chicken for your supper. So you don't do egg and do fish and do that way, then you are asking yourself, if you want to do egg pancake, egg pancake or egg Bible, that one day you must advise yourself because it won't be helpful. So I say one egg a day is fine. Maximum you can go to is two. I don't think that if you start moving beyond two, then you are getting too much calories from the egg and it will affect you. Okay, <clears throat> okay. Um, please. Uh, regards to China, uh, usually we live in we live in Ghana and we live in China. Mm. So typically, you see um, Ghanaians sleeping around two a.m., three a.m. Some yeah. as late as five a.m. Mm. and then wake up around 11, 11 a.m. to mm. two p.m. So uh, waking up. We, we can't follow the normal rule that you have to wake up around 5 p.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., and take your breakfast within the first two to three hours. So what advice do you have for us? The, because some people, as, as late as 2 a.m., they still want to eat because they are still active. Yeah. So, so far as you are active, there's nothing wrong with eating, uh, especially when you feel famished or you feel hungry. Then, then again, you don't have to wait to be extremely hungry before you, that's one portion I should give. But then you must decide at some point in time that this will be my main meal times and this will be my snack time. You understand? So I decide that, okay, because of my time, and, and, and I'm, I must say that if your sleep time is erratic, you don't have a pattern, it doesn't help your health. I must be frank with you. Because studies show that people who do night shift, they go for day shift, they go for night shift, they have problems later in life. And it's really steady. Maybe in Ghana, we did a study among nurses, and it was evident. So, whatever your thing is, try and find a pattern of sleep that is helpful, even if you have to be awake at three. Make it that way. And when you are eating, decide that this one will be my main meal and this one will be my snack. There's nothing wrong with taking, say, some. Uh, three spoons of rice at 2 a.m. If you are going to stay up and work up to about 5 or, or 6 a.m., there's nothing wrong with that. But when you take fufu, meat fufu, and then you sleep, it's let me. Uh, hello. Yeah, my internet has started. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Please talk. Can I ask the next? Can I ask yeah, the next question? Talk. Yes, please. Yes. Um. Somebody wants to know: Is there any special food for uh, for those who have pot belly? Is there any special well, food that they can eat? No, there is no special food. Though. Pot belly is. I must confess, very difficult to deal with pot belly. But what you must do is to reduce the quantities that you are eating at a time. Start from there. Number two, reduce the number. If you, you exercise and you don't eat right, you won't get the result. If you eat right and exercise alongside, then you can help yourself. So if you want to deal with your pot belly, this is my advice. Don't add drink to the food. Reduce the quantities that you take at a time. I don't take a lot of fried foods. Generally, go on a weight loss routine. And then you realize that the um, pot belly will also come. These things about taking lime water to, to bring down the pot belly and all those things is neither here nor there. It's not really supported by scientific evidence. Yes, please. Okay, I see some question here. For someone who eats eggs once a week, can two be eating at once? Yes, I, I think I can pass with that. I, an egg, some people eat like six. Okay, my prayers go out to them. I'm reading some <laughs> of the comments. Somebody says, Gary is cocaine in China. I understand. So yeah, make it balanced when you're eating. Because you can some soak the gari and add pepper and yeah, senior. The yes, the issue is um Ghanaian foods, especially gari, is very expensive in China. That's that's what the person the person is trying to oh, say. Oh, I see, I see. It's not easy to come by. So if somebody is eating gari, like it's it's, it's 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 a luxury, not uh what pertains in Ghana, where it's for quote unquote, the people don't have the food to eat. So Okay, I get it. So, so the guy, whatever you, however you take it, you must moderate it and make it balanced. Okay, that's that's the most important thing. Okay, that's another question. Like, uh, please ask. If someone who works at night eats very heavy at night, does it have effects? No, it doesn't. It doesn't then again you must ask which work you are doing are you a security man sitting down all throughout the night or you are in the lab moving about if you are in the lab moving about then you are doing some form of physical activity but if it's a stationary work that you are doing then it's not most of the nights people, people who work at night they go and sleep at night so they, they don't they are not active but if you are active yes uh, it should be okay Okay, um, please. Is it okay to eat heavy food in the day and, and go to bed? Because we talk about night eating, night eating, night eating. Uh, is it only the night that when you eat and sleep that is bad or the day to it's bad? Hello, can you please can you hear me? Well, if you see if I if you are can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, if you are eating heavy in the afternoon and you go and sleep for more than four or five hours, you store fat. You understand? So if you are napping for an hour, then it should be fine because you get up and you move about. The thing is that when you take in energy, the energy must be used. If you take the energy and you are not using it, you are storing it. And that's what leads to the fat, yeah, the weight gain and the fat accumulation. So whether it's in the afternoon or in the evening, if you're eating large and you're sleeping immediately for long hours, then it is counterproductive. But most of the time, the, the number of hours people sleep in the afternoon is lesser than the evening one. That's why the evening one has to be precaution. But you'll be sleeping for eight hours or more in the evening. 
But during the daytime, what quiet three hours, four hours? You understand? Unless maybe you have shifted your night sleep to afternoon sleep, you are doing eight hours in the afternoon. That one there, you have the same effect, you know. But don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that late eating is bad. Heavy late eating is what is bad. So when you are eating heavy meals, and heavy is really is relative, heavy is dependent upon the amount of calories. That you are eating at the time. That's why I'm saying that if you are drinking Milo and it's Milo paint with a lot of sugar and milk and a whole bouncy baby bread by the this thing, then it's as good as heavy meal. You understand? So just keep that at the back of your mind. Okay, thank you. Uh, Honorable Sector, do you have another question, please? Maybe we'll take the last Salam. one. We, should be, uh, we are finishing very soon, man. Yes, yes, the last yes. one. Um, okay, very good. Please, I'd like to find out uh, what the ideal food for people that have diabetes. Is there any kind of uh, dietary pattern or food supplement? Like? My boy. <laughs> ideal food is a very interesting. Salon, we are laughing. <laughs> Let me to prescribe a diet on this, this session. <laughs> Salon. That's all for me. <laughs> Diabetes diet is you need to sit down with Salom and let Salom take you through it. But basically, it's about increasing the fibrous food because you see, when you take food that has a lot of fiber, you are reducing the rate at which the sugar is coming to the blood, which you call the glycemic index. Also, you are looking at um, eating moderate quantities, especially with the carbohydrate, reducing the portion, the quantities of the carbohydrate. And then, like I said, eating three times and then making sure that you don't eat a lot of fats and a lot of meats and saturated fat things. Uh, and then we find sugars like the pastries and things that you eat them less often. And then you take your medications. If somebody does that, all these food juices and these soft drinks must be minimized. So that you have a problem. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Uh Arbin and Akufi, thank you for your time. Uh we 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 have a gift for you, and I would like to call on our <laughs> we would like to call on our president um in the person of Irene Koko to present the gift to you. So Um, I don't know if you are available, kindly unmute yourself and. Okay, thank you so much for giving me the platform. So, and dietitian Nana, Nana, um, yeah. I really yeah. enjoyed the presentation. You, I was, I just found myself rolling on the floor, especially the, at the time when you said, um, um, one of your patient told you I I drink occasionally, but the patients are frequent. It got me on the floor. I, I, I really enjoyed your presentation. I do hope that uh, we have another section with you. And so without much, I would like to present this beautiful citation to you. And uh, the content to you is that the National Union of Ghana to the China sincerely thank you for giving yourself to educate the entire membership of the union on its health webinar team, nutrition, diet, and health held on 18th December 2021. The event would not have been a success without your support. We deeply appreciate the in-depth knowledge you shared and the willingness you exhibited in making our program successful. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, citation, Nana, I present to you this citation. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, I'm grateful. Uh, we are family, so I'm happy to be of service. Salam is my guy, my guy, I can't say no to him. I was actually supposed to be in, an, in another meeting right now. But uh, I had to cancel it to be here uh, to do this presentation. 
Uh, this is my passion, so I'm happy when I do it. The name, you can call me Dietitian One. That is how everybody can call me. Uh, I am on, I'm on Instagram as Dietitian Above. I think that if you can follow me right now, we have about 60 people here. I mean, if I can ask any of anything of you, is to for you guys to follow me and then possibly like my, my, my videos and my pages if you can. Dietitian above D I E T I T I A N A B O V E. I'm sure Salam is following me on Instagram. Uh, follow me and uh, feel free and send me a DM or any message. Salam can share my number with you. You can WhatsApp me. I don't do very well with calls. You can WhatsApp me or send me any queries. I'm happy to be of service for you. We are the, the leaders of our nation in the now and the future. So it's also networking for me because I never know where any of you will be placed in the near future. And I will need one or two from you. Like I have been of a blessing to you uh, without any payment. So thank you so much for uh, having me. I'm excited to have joined. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, we are running up, so we we'll call on uh, Ms. Maria Abdullah to give us the vote of thanks. We we'll take the closing prayer, and then we would we would uh, stay a good night. Some of us are not starting our day though, but Honorable <laughs> Maria, you can unmute yourself and and give us the okay, vote of thanks. Thank you very much, Honorable um, Salam. Um, I'm so humbled and it's like I feel later today uh, to be called upon to give the vote of thanks. And <laughs> my first, my utmost gratitude, my utmost gratitude would go to the most high because we can all attest to the fact that without him, this program will not be successful. So we can all bear witness that to the success of this program. And secondly, um, so, 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 so much, like it's, it's really an honor for me today to have this encounter with a resource person in person <laughs> of Dietitian One. Actually, I've been seeing him back home on our screens, which is on UTV, which I personally enjoy his um, programs a lot. So it's, it's an honor to have you on, um, in our midst this evening. I believe we've all tapped into your experience for sharing this wonderful experience with us. We are very grateful. And in our can, Yebeka says, Dear China Sakuko, Boko Krokoa, and Dietitian One, Neye, Yenya, your world looks shiner for, and I had their Sedakes here, and they brought well open. So thank you so much. I'm very humbled to have this personal encounter with you. And also to, uh, um, executive team and also the various committees for putting up this educative and also um, insightful uh, program together. We're so grateful to you and to our ever, oh, to our um, uh, members. For members, I don't know what to say <laughs> because without you, so without the executive team, the members won't also be there with the, and vice versa. So. We are so, so grateful for your time, for availing yourself in your numbers. When I even saw the participation list, I was so impressed. I believe that it's because we have um, Dietitian One <laughs> as a resource person. So at least it brought most of us out to also partake in this um, insightful program. So we are, we are so grateful to everyone for making up time from their busy schedules. You know the time in China, it's so, so, so crazy. But you've money to take part in this program. So we are so grateful to everyone and I would say thank you to us all and God bless us all. So good night and maybe to our next program, we'd all be together as one big family. Thank you. Honorable says, Salam, you are muted. We can't hear you. So sorry. Um, thank you so much for uh, that wonderful appreciation. We would call on Honorable Isha to give us a closing prayer. Let's pray. 
become a living, self-subsistent, and supporter of all. By your mercy, we seek assistance. Rectify for us all our offense, and do not leave us to ourselves even for the blink of an eye. We are your servants, we are by your covenant, and promise us that as we can. We take refuge in you from the devil of which we have committed. We acknowledge your favor upon us, acknowledge our sins, so forgive us for verily none can forgive sins except you. Grant us a good health. Protect us and our beloved union. We praise you and give you all the glory. Amen. 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 Oh, wow. That was a sweet voice. Uh, um, Amen. Guys, thank you so much for coming. Some people want, are asking some questions. Please, I will answer you in I will answer you later. For now, we, we want to release our, our resource person. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, have a lovely day.